Hi everybody, I'm Satoli with History in Your Own Backyard. Today I'm in Wood County, West Virginia, checking out some old train tunnels. And right over here is a train tunnel, an abandoned train tunnel, back in the woods. Let's go check it out. A little bit of background information about this tunnel and the former rail line. In the mid-1850s, the Northwestern Virginia Railroad built a 103-mile-long rail line from Grafton, West Virginia, to the Ohio River in Parkersburg, West Virginia. When the line was completed in May of 1857, it became known as the B&O Parkersburg Branch. The line was abandoned in 1988 and then later purchased by the state of West Virginia. In 1991, the state began opening up segments of the former rail line, turning it into a recreational trail as it is today. Along this 103 mile long line, there were 23 tunnels built along with 52 bridges to limit curvature of the line and to keep the grade under 1.5%. In 1963, most of the tunnels along this line had to be quote-unquote transformed in order to accommodate the higher piggyback trailers and larger railroad boxcars. Five tunnels were daylighted, which basically blasted off the roof of the tunnel. Three tunnels were bypassed. Four tunnels had their roofs raised. And five tunnels would have their floors lowered, so this tunnel was built in 1857 and was bypassed in 1963. Look at the stonework on this thing. Pretty amazing. There was a collapse from what I understand and once we get back in here we'll see it. But right now, wow, look at this. Look at that crack. Nice stonework. So anyway, there was a collapse here. And I don't know if this is, I guess this was it. Maybe, I don't know. Who cool, look at this. A little cutout when the trains came by, you jump in there. That's pretty cool. It's interesting that they've got brick embedded where rock is. And they got a brick ceiling lined up. Hopefully nothing collapses while we're in here. That would suck. It looks like there's daylight on the other end. God, it's 65. I shouldn't be doing this shit. Okay, let's see what we got. Kind of slick. It's tough holding the camera in one hand and a light in the other. I hope you people appreciate this. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, you can see where the cave in happened there. God, that's big. Ha! Ah, we can see the other end. How cool. I don't trust this though. I think we'll walk around the outside to the other side. This is getting kind of sketchy. On top of that, nobody knows I'm down here. 
And if something happens, who's going to feed my cats? Okay, let's go back out. Tunnel 22, also known as Rodemir's Tunnel, is 338 feet long and one of the three tunnels that were bypassed in 1963. Dan Roby with the West Virginia and North Carolina Rails website states that on June 30th, 1950, at 325 p.m., a westbound mail train entered the east portal of the tunnel at 48 miles per hour, which exceeded the 45 mile per hour limit for this section of the line. The east portal is the side that you just saw me enter by foot. I was unable to enter the west portal due to the amount of vegetation in the area. Anyway, there were two locomotives and 16 cars of various types, including coach, baggage, and refrigerated express cars that day in 1950. Upon entering the tunnel, the engineer of the lead locomotive heard a sound that sounded like a broken rail, and the train began to derail before the brakes could be applied. Both locomotives derailed to the right, moving along the north wall of the tunnel, and derailed to the right after exiting the west portal. Both locomotives sustained considerable damage, as did the first three cars. The north wall of the tunnel was heavily damaged, and the track inside was destroyed. The engineer in the second locomotive was killed, and the engineer and fireman in the lead locomotive sustained injuries. All equipment was determined to be in good working order at the time of the accident. The Interstate Commerce Commission came to the conclusion that the derailment was probably due to a broken rail. Mm -hmm.